Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about buying hunting land on a middle class income. I'm gonna share some of the, the steps and experiences that my wife and I took and then explain how with these three ideas, these three key concepts, my wife and I were able to stop wishing it would happen, stop hoping it would happen, and just make it happen. And as of now, we own over 170 acres of land between North Dakota and Minnesota, bear hunting land. And we were able to do that at a young age on a middle class income uh, by following these three concepts. The first concept, the first idea that we need to think about is getting to that down payment point. This is, the, this is the most difficult hurdle of all. We're so wired, our society is so geared towards consumerism and spending that it, it makes it feel almost completely impossible at times to save money, especially now with inflation. You know, it might not be as, as difficult as one might think. And the, the first area that I'll point to is making monthly payments on things. Are you currently making monthly payments on a nice pickup truck, a big fancy boat, nice snowmobile, maybe it's a nice wheeled fish house, whatever it might be, maybe it's a maybe it's a home or apartment rent that is a lot nicer than you need. We spend money on these things so freely and it's it's because our society is so wired to get us to enter into those contracts through financing. You know, we want that big fancy side-by-side -side for $20,000. Uh, nobody has $20,000 just laying around, but if you pay it back little by little, month by month, you know, that monthly payment's pretty small, right? That's how they, that's how they get us to buy these things. But the problem is, is we overdo it a lot of the time. You know, a lot of us own these things, we're making payments on them, that big fancy pickup truck, and it just chips away at our monthly income to the point where there's nothing left. So the way you're gonna get that down payment is you need to get your expenses south of your monthly take home income. It's a pretty simple concept, but it's a lot easier said or, or described in theory than practiced in reality. And you know, one of the ways that I was able to uh, break through, sort of break that cycle. I've really wanted to buy a fancy snowmobile, finance a nice one. I've really wanted a nicer boat for many years. But uh, right now I drive uh, an old uh, rusted out Chevy pickup truck, a 2009 uh, half ton pickup with, oh, what do I have? 220,000 miles on it now, just about. And um, you know, the, the four wheel drive works and the radio works. And that's all I really need in a pickup truck. My snowmobile is an older Polaris uh, 550 fan, uh, two up uh, Polaris snowmobile. And again, the thing's ugly, but does it run? Yeah, it does. And it gets me out there. I'm actually going on a, a lake trout fishing trip here in, uh, in the next few weeks up to Ontario. And that 550 fan, that Polaris snowmobile is gonna get me out there with all my buddies lake trout fishing. People may not understand you um, you know, opting away from these nicer uh, luxuries in life. So something you need to consider, if you need to get to that down payment point, consider selling that big fancy pickup truck. Just sell it. Take the money out of it that you can get and go buy a $4,000 pickup truck with, you know, something with four wheel drive that works. Heck, maybe it's a minivan for a couple of years. Um, I got a good buddy who drives a man van as we call it and You'd be surprised what, uh, what those things can get through with front wheel drive with some, some good tires on them. Uh, but no, really, it, in all reality, just it, it's kind of a shocking concept to contemplate. Just sell that big fancy boat. Just do it. Stop those monthly payments. Take that monthly payment that you were making on your pickup truck, on your boat, on your snowmobile, on your side-by-side, -side, on your fish house. Redirect that into a savings account. You know, can you take your tax returns every spring? Instead of going on a big fancy vacation the next two years, could you just put that money into a savings account? Could you go to eat less? The list is endless. Can you find a way to come up with an extra $500 a month to $1,000 a month maybe? I think a lot of you probably could. It's kind of a scary thought at first, you know, not having those nicer luxuries in life. 
but the thing of it is you guys is you know they make new pickups every year all of these manufacturers are making and producing and putting out on the lots brand new pickup trucks every single year and they will be doing that till the day i die and you can walk down to the dealership and buy a brand new pickup truck any day you want the rest of your life but you can't do that with hunting land and that's how i look at this is i'd rather buy the hunting land now the difficult things now it's not going to get any easier to buy later on and i can you know once i have the land that i want the hunting land then i can then i can sit back i can pull back on the hunting land search and i can go buy one of those big fancy pickups later in life they'll be making them brand new family and friends will question your motives if you do this if you go and sell some of this nice stuff um, people are going to give you funny looks your buddies will probably make fun of you but as long as you keep the goal in your head you can sleep well at night and know that you're working towards that goal of owning your own land owning land is not very common for many people especially younger folks and so if it's a goal that you have you're not going to be able to be average with a middle class income you can't afford to have all the same payments that everybody else does in life and then expect to have 40 or 80 acres fall into your lap out of the sky and you know there's there's something that i've always pondered and mulled over in life and that's average people put in average effort and get average results i'm just going to say that again average people put in average effort and get average results in life and again owning hunting land is not average very very few people own bare acreage so if that's a goal of yours you can't just wish it will happen while being average you can't just hope it's going to happen one day it'll never happen you need to punch through and and not be average so again your family might question your motives your friends are going to probably make a little bit of fun of you if you don't have the fancy equipment like they do that they're making payments on every month but it's a step you have to take to get to that down payment mark. And that down payment on a piece of hunting property is gonna be around 25% down. Different lenders have different amounts and depending on the situation, if there's equity, if you're gonna collateralize, there's all kinds of details like that, but that's another video. The, the point of this video is the big concept, breaking through our consumeristic lifestyle and breaking through that average mentality and letting our friends and family drag us down and sort of pull us back from making these bold moves into being average like the rest of society. I don't want you guys to be average. I'm trying not to be average and it's uncomfortable at times. It's, it's a lonely, dark road at times when you see all of your friends with this this fancy equipment and the nice big boat and you can't keep up with the snowmobile but at the end of the day as long as that fire stays lit for buying hunting land it makes it all worth it i'm standing on the 20 acres in minnesota that we own that my wife and i bought and it has been worth every minute of it you guys the sacrifices made and being able to save those dollars for this down payment for this land it's been a hundred percent worth it not even not even a question i've never looked back that's the first concept get to that down payment you're going to get there by not not being average because we can't afford to be average if we're middle class people working a nine to five job we just it doesn't work that way it's like trying to shove a square peg in a round hole the second concept the second thing we got to do is find the land it's not easy to find bare acreage right now uh, i'm in i'm in the upper midwest um, it's tough around here it's i know it's probably a whole heck of a lot tougher in other parts of the country and there's three things that I did my wife and I when we were searching for bear hunting land in Minnesota and the first one was I sent out letters I literally wrote letters I, I typed up a template and then I would insert folks names and addresses or different info depending on the property owners that I was sending it to by the end of my letter writing I had written 110 letters to folks of the 110 letters we had three maybes and one for sure offer the lady offered us it was a one it was actually 118 acres it was an odd lot it was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so it was actually a really good deal it just wasn't there were some other parts about the property that made it undesirable we ended up not buying it but the point is is if you're willing to write a hundred letters to landowners saying if you're ever interested in selling give me a call i'm looking if you're willing to write a, and mail out a hundred letters in the mail you might get an offer on a piece of land the second thing we did was we ran a want to buy ad in our local newspaper classified 
that generated two offers. We ended up not buying either one of those because it didn't fit exactly what we were looking for in our property search. That's a great way to get thousands of viewers and eyes on, on you so that if folks are thinking of selling land, they can do a private party sale with you and cut the realtor out of the deal. Everybody saves money. The third thing you can do to find land is just download the realtor.com app on your phone, set up the notifications to notify you anytime a piece of property comes up for sale in your area that fits your description. It's amazing, you guys. The land that I'm standing on right now, this 20 acres that we bought in Minnesota, I found, even though I was working with a realtor, um, he, it was the weekend, it was a Saturday morning, he was off doing something, and I got a notification, a bell not or a, a push notification on my cell phone. An email came through that said a property just got listed that morning in northern Minnesota. Opened it up, looked beautiful, wanted, had, wanted to go walk it, and within a few hours, uh, my wife and I had an offer in. And it, the point here, you guys, is we found it, not my realtor. So we weren't just real, relying on a realtor to find us a piece of land. I was doing all these other things and I was honest with my realtor. I told him, just so you know, I'm writing letters to landowners for private party sales. I'm putting want to buy ads in the paper for private party sales. And he, I was totally transparent with him and he knew that and he still wanted to represent us as a, as a realtor. So um, those are three things. If you do those three things, you will more than likely find a piece of bare land that comes up for sale that you can hopefully get to before other folks get to, especially if it's a good deal and it's a good piece of land. The third and final concept here that if you can confront and overcome, it mathematically will work out for you to buy, buy hunting land. The third concept is build it. And what I mean by that is you're more than likely on a middle-class income, you're more than likely not gonna be able to buy that golden paradise farm right out of the gate. Uh, you know, I watch YouTube, I watch hunting shows, I, I watch the juries do their thing, I watch Bill Winky and, you know, Jeff Sturgis and all these guys who have made a lot of money, especially like the juries, for example, or some of these more established folks. Um, it can be pretty depressing and a lot of us get dejected in our search for our own hunting land because we look around us and our communities and we're like, well, there's nothing that great for sale around here. There's no big giant, you know, booners getting killed on these properties that, I, that I'm interested in. And it's the, it's the golden farm dilemma, I'll call it. We, in our heads, we build up the golden farm in our head and we think, well, I'll never have what the Drury's have or I'll never have what Bill Winky had in Iowa has now I don't know what he's doing now the or, or maybe it's a friend a family friend who shot a lot of nice bucks on this certain 200 acres that got handed down through the family and he gets to hunt it or she gets to hunt it we we, we suffer from the golden farm dilemma and in our head we we sort of think that these other properties that are for sale are no good we're like well there okay there is you know some junky 30 acres for sale over there that side of town or you know it's it's out in the middle of nowhere and there's no history of big bucks getting shot on it i don't like it i'm gonna move on i'm gonna i'm gonna keep looking that type of thinking and that type of mindset is going to be really detrimental to your overall goal here and efforts here of buying hunting land and now if there's if there's some non-starter with the property like there's a I don't know, some commercial complex next door to it, or it's just not gonna work for deer hunting, that's one thing. But a lot of these properties that come up, it can feel depressing looking at them because you don't have that big buck history like the Drury's have on theirs, for example. We need to break that mindset. We need to get into the mindset of we're gonna build it. We're gonna make it into that property. When I bought this property, there was no history of big bucks getting killed here. I, I didn't even know the people who owned it. Um, I know, the, I know the county I'm in, and I know the kind of caliber of bucks in the county, which, is, which you all do. And what I've done is I've put food on the property, I've cut bedding pockets, I've increased the carrying capacity, I've increased the fall food source, I've done things to the property and enhanced it incredibly. And in my first fall hunting it, I shot a beautiful chocolate horned Minnesota 10 pointer on it. So the point here, you guys, is we're gonna have to build it. We're gonna have to start entry level. We're gonna have to start down here on one of the lower rungs of property. We're gonna improve it and build it up into a, a good property. And that's how we build history on the property. 
you know, if you think of a lot of, think of vacation spots, if, if you have one in the family, maybe it's a, a grandparents own a lake lot or a lake cabin somewhere, or, you know, grandpa owned this piece of property or that vacation area down in Arizona or Florida, when they first bought that, it probably wasn't the, the paradise that it is today. They probably bought it when it was an old, overgrown, kind of ugly lake lot way back in the day, and they carved out this beautiful thing and they turned it into a beautiful lot. They had, they had a vision in their head about what it could become, and they bought it and they did it. So well, now when we all arrive, th three generations later, we look at grandma and grandpa's vacation home and we're like, well dang, this is beautiful. I'll never be able to afford something like this. The mindset is we need to start entry level. We need to build it into something beautiful. Then you can sell it. You can make a, you can make a profit on this. You can, then you could buy a bigger property later. Or if it really works out, you could hang on to it. And so those are the three concepts. The first one is getting your expenses below your monthly income, creating, creating a delta in there where you can save money every month and put it into a savings account to get to that down payment mark. The second concept is finding the land, and I give you those three ideas on how to find land for sale. The third idea or concept is to build it. Build the land up into something beautiful, into something great. Um, that's on you. That's, that's not on someone else. You don't want to be looking for those fantasy farms, those paradise farms, um, you, you know, the golden farm, I say in quotes. You don't want to be looking for those for sale. Because if there is a history of Booners getting shot on it and all the food plots are already built and in place, it's not something you're gonna be able to afford, you and I. And so with that middle class income lens through which we're looking at this problem, we need to start down here and be prepared, have that vision and be prepared to build it into the golden farm. So those are the three concepts. Some of the things that are making it a lot more difficult in the future to buy land is there's a, a global initiative out there and in, in the research I've done on this, they use the phrase, the global community, whatever that means. Um, it's called the 30 by 30 initiative. So the quote, global community wants to preserve 30% of the land and marine habitat by the year 2030. Now, while that's a good intentioned initiative and to save our environment and our earth, um, that presents a lot of, of concern to someone like me who wants to buy more hunting land. I see that now as the global community, a host of governments competing for the few remaining parcels of bare land. You know, we've also got uh, other things going on. China buying land in North Dakota. Uh, Bill Gates just bought land in North Dakota. Um, the point here, you guys, is there are forces at work and there are uh, undercurrents right now as I film this video, as you watch this, there are things going on right now that are going to be making it more and more difficult for you and I to buy bare land in the future. I think of my kids and um, that's why I wanted to make this video. If some of you feel the same way as I do, I hope to hear from you guys. Um, let me know what your journey has been like. And I want you guys to know that I'm here. I've walked on this lonely and dark road, um, sort of being the oddball of the group, being sort of the outcast at times from that consumer driven, that payment driven consumeristic lifestyle. Um, and it's, it's so worth it when you get to the end. It is so worth it, you guys, when you have your own land that you can call your own. And so with that, if you guys got any value out of the video, would you do me a favor and consider subscribing to my channel? That really helps me and it motivates me to make more of these videos, um, the more subscribers I have. So um, if you got any value out of it or appreciate um, the things that I've offered you guys, think of that. Um, otherwise, I hope your journey is uh, productive. I hope you guys um, get to the point where I did, where I got so sick and tired of wishing it would happen. I got so sick and tired of hoping it would happen. Finally, one day I just said enough is enough and I went out and made it happen on owning hunting land. It's a lonely and dark road at times, but it's so worth it. I hope you guys are off to a good new year. It's the middle of winter here. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And until next time, you guys, take care.